<laughs> the, uh, um, and then they'll, you know, they'll work some off hours, and it'll include the inspection of the license establishments itself. So we have that going on. No, uh, and there would be a few places in this book where we get complaints. ABA was the main complaint for them in the last meeting that I had with them. And I encourage them to call us when there's a noise, but to uh, identify the source. And looking back at it, I didn't see a lot of calls. I don't think there were any calls, to be honest with you, that were noise oriented to commercial establishments. Uh, so we're not doing it on view. We're not doing it. We're not going out with our meters on our own. But if we get the calls, we will. Jack. Yeah. Just in reference to the people, if, if it's something like that, um, it really helps if we do have a complaining person because as police officers, our peace cannot be disturbed. So they may be loud, but it can't. It, that doesn't disturb me. Um, so if we have a complaining person, that where normally what we do is issue a warning and we go out and we say, you know, you need to keep the noise down, so on. And if we continuously go out, maybe we have another avenue we could do something where we could tell them to move on if they don't live there and it's trespass, to so on and so forth. But sometimes in instances like those, when it's people being loud and they're maybe drinking, it does help if <coughs> we have a complaining person because unfortunately for us, as police officers, our peace cannot be disturbed. So that's just something where it may be helpful to cease the behavior if we did have a complaining person. Thanks. Mm -hmm. For parties that are outdoor parties in somebody's backyard or front yard um, where there's 50 or 100 people out there. Um, at what point in the night is do the police feel comfortable that it's okay for them to go in and ask them to hold the noise down? Usually it's a weekend 11. Often they, uh, so a, a lot of times um, in Lower East where people do have permits. Okay, that's the that's the issue. If, if it's permitted, it'll state it, and then we'll ask them to follow the permit. Um, but the small parties that happen at the place, we'll go to any call at any time and tell them to keep the noise down. If it's 10 o'clock at night, we get a call because there's too many people that are making noise. Most of the time, they listen. I mean, most of the time they do. If you call us twice, the people usually realize there's some problem. Um, I don't know too many instances where we get a call, and I've heard of that we couldn't abate it because the police were present and they want to listen to us. Sometimes there's things going on that they don't want us to know about it too. Yeah, I mean, I think these are just big, loud, boisterous parties, and people have a tendency not to want to call the police because yeah. you don't want to rain on somebody's yeah. parade. But still, it's midnight, it's 1 o'clock, and there's still 100 yeah. people out there yelling and yeah. playing no, music. Yeah, go back to what the sergeant said. We, we want to call, call us. I mean, if the officer has his window down or hers and hears the noise, we may do something. But chances are we're not going to, in all the commotion going on, we're not, our peace isn't disturbed. We say, you know, we need to call. Call anonymously, you know, reasonable people have limits too. And so they're going to play at 10, 11, 12 o'clock, there's 100 of them partying, maybe they'll quiet down. The first thing you want to do is get invited. <laughs> but in my younger days, I used to have numerous parties, and the first thing I did was invite the neighbors. Because a lot of neighbors were perturbed because you didn't invite me. Yeah. But, yeah, these, and I found that but as these a result, usually are short term renters who are in town renting they, somebody's well, they house. Stopped house. Inviting, they, stupid. Yeah. they stopped inviting them. Well, I was a renter too, but they said they were all. As we all know, any crime is too much crime. But I think in some ways it's gratifying to see. The number of empty seats here. I remember when I first came on the council, this room would have been standing room only. And I think there's a reason for that. I think we should give the chief and the force credit for the things they're doing. And I do get to see it a lot more than you do from the inside. And the number of things that <coughs> the force is involved with, I think the Safe Streets program, uh, where we've got all this interdisciplinary cooperation going on, which has sustained itself for a long time now, and it's hugely important because we're linking the enforcement with the uh, juvenile people that follow up with the judiciary, which is a big problem, as Chief alluded to briefly. You know, they can do all the hard work to get somebody uh, apprehended, but if we can't get them tried and kept off the streets, then they're going to be right back out here with us. But I, I, I want you to know from my observation, there are just incredible number of things that are going on. We have more work to do, there's no doubt about it, but uh, the thing, I think we should all be pleased and proud of what the force is doing, all the different programs, and 
and that they're out here tonight after hours and, uh, coming here to help us and talk to us. I think uh, we really do owe them uh, a round of applause and a, a debt of gratitude. Thank you. I'll say again, I appreciate that. But I really do appreciate the excellent work of the team. I mean, the, the officers here are doing a great job, and there's things that are going on. We could we could definitely have a long conversation about any number of things you said. We could talk about all kinds of things, whether it's technology, uh, whether it's our resources with the feds, whether it's our state's attorneys, whether it's our U.S. prosecutors. There's a lot of programs going on. If you ever really want to talk to me about it or anybody else, and, and certainly in more depth, we will. But, uh, you know, we do scrape the surface. But, uh, again, I'll, I'll be happy and we'll all be happy to show up at any meeting you have and discuss what we're doing, what we can do better. Thank you, sir. I'd just like to make a pitch for the home safety evaluation because we had your officer come to our home and just things like three-inch screws and the strike plates for the outer doors, just things that I never would have thought of. Yeah. You know, I mean, just a lot of great tips for first floor especially things with the windows. Yeah. I mean, listen, I mean it, was just, it was a great service, and I encourage everybody to take advantage of it. it, it you should. It's amazing that, listen, I, I want to tell you, you know, this isn't my first police department I came from, but the thoroughness and the, the investment that the officers have in the personal desire really second to none, and our training is as good or better than anywhere. So the resources that we're able to help you with, we're going to. And if you don't see this in a lot in every police department. We can do it while we can. We have our priorities, and we're going to do this stuff. I think Sarge said 20 minutes to a parking complaint, two minutes to a violent crime or less. You know, sometimes the phone's like, why did it take 20 minutes to get the parking complaint? Well, we're doing a home assessment with you, sir. But so there's a lot of, you know, we're really trying to peel it in different directions, and I think they're doing an excellent job. So, enough said. If you have anything, there, just call me. Call us. Okay. I thank you so much for everybody coming out, and please feel free to, um, you know, sign up for any volunteer positions, or to be a block captain, or to get on, um, you know, an email list that, you know, I send out, um, media blasts, or um, I'll, I'll do a summary for this meeting, whatever that kind of thing. So the sign up sheets are over there. Hey, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Oh yes, thank you. Comment. People, you know, when you mentioned parking issues, I found that if people are vigilant about simple things like left wheel or parking, we have found two stolen cars and a car with stolen tags because people just come in and drop them. But when they're parked illegal or they're abandoned, like dead tags or uh, dead tags was another one, or leaving boat trailers up, we found out that they didn't even live in the neighborhood. And nobody bothered, nobody knew that there was a law against it. And when I, uh, I was asked at one point, that's how I ended up joining the neighborhood once, because I was trying to find out if what I was doing was legal. <laughs> and most of it was. <laughs> but as a result, that's how we found this out. And we, that, people started to get to know each other and say, hey, you know, I'm going to be out of town, I, that type of thing. And the elderly that I mentioned, the fact that I went around and knocked on doors. And I gave people hell. I said, you've lived in this town 40 years. You don't know your next door neighbor. What kind of wrong with you? Mm -hmm. No, I think it is good to try to get to know your neighbors. And just people walk Has everybody been on our website, by the way? Yes. Make sure you go on there. There's a lot of, it's replete with a lot of info. You should go and see what's there if you have. Plus the crime apps, interactive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice. Thank you.